Miles Phantom now for about 10 days. I've done a good amount of riding with it. Um, I think I put over about 40 or so miles on it. I put 26 and a half miles during the range test if you saw that video. Um, I've done a lot of cruising around with it, but I don't get to keep it. I'm not getting paid for this, so this is my truly honest review of the board. It's really, really fun. <laughs> it's an awesome little short board that I think is actually in its own kind of class. I don't think there's any other boards out there that are really doing this formula, which to me is like an actual miniaturized longboard. It's not a short board, it's a miniaturized longboard or a shortened longboard, which is kind of a different category. So I'm gonna start right off the bat with the deck. I think that's the most unique part of this board. It's a drop-down deck. Now a drop-down deck means that where you mount the trucks is higher than where you actually stand. So it, the deck actually drops down. Typically you see this in long boards and boards like that. I, I've never seen it in a short board in this size. It's a 31 inch board. It's nine and a half inches wide at its widest point. And the entire thing is made of carbon fiber. So it's really stiff. There's no like ricketiness to it. There's no flex to it at all, um, which the board goes really fast, so the deck feels solid at those speeds, hitting 27, 28, 29, 30 miles an hour. I broke 30 on the board. It felt fine. Like, everybody's all worried that your feet are too close. I didn't think so at all. Now, if you would like to have an extremely wide stance, like ridiculous, maybe not the right board, but I don't think any short board is gonna really fit the bill for that. So, in the world of short boards, which Having a tail is kind of nice. This does have like a micro tail to it. You can tic-tac, but it's not the easiest thing in the world. Um, so I'm not going to really say it's a tail, but you, but you can, you can tic-tac in a pinch. But in the world of short boards, I've never seen anything where you can like brace yourself as well. And when you're going these kinds of speeds, it's nice to have that little lip and those flares to really push against and flex against. Even when I was carving, I was using that that kind of platform to like push into and really get into it. It's really fun. It's a cool little shape. Uh, and it's actually where my feet, I think, end up being about the width when I'm on a longboard too. So it's not like a huge difference, really. So that brings me to my next section, which is all about the controller. Now, the controller is really nice. It has a nice lanyard for it, which is you want a lanyard on this so that if you're riding it, you accidentally drop it, you still have a controller. Um, but uh, it's got two buttons on here, and it's got a rocker wheel, forward to go back, or forward to go forward, uh, and back to go back. Um, but you hold the power button to turn it on, you hold it to turn it off, uh, and then the bottom button is a switch through the, uh, the speed modes. There's one, two, and three. And what's nice is whenever you switch between a speed mode, it vibrates, so you notice if you do it, which I did do accidentally, but my fault, but like when I was sitting at a stoplight and I was waiting, I hit it with my hand, I felt it shake, I looked, and I was like, oh, I'm in speed mode two. Not a big deal, but if you don't like to ride in like speed mode two or three and you like to ride in one and you bump it, at least you'll know that that happens, so that's cool. Uh, but it's a nice remote, it's got kind of a rubberized feel, not super rubbery, but it's it's smooth, it feels good, it's like a matte finish, I would call it. Um, but yeah, it's nice, I like, I love having this little screen though, that's really cool. It shows you uh, how fast you're currently going, your complete odometer to your board, how, how like, what the your total mileage is, and then the mileage of your current ride. So, those are the stats that it gives you, and you can also switch directions to using reverse on here as well and you can change the wheel size calculation so that it's calculating your speed and range correctly. Uh, you can do all that from the remote right here. There is no app to the board, but I think the controller does a pretty good job uh, paired with, you're probably gonna use your phone and use some app like Ride or Relive, or a lot of people like to use this different apps anyways, so. But the controller is solid, I had no connection issues, uh, and it was all good. So the style of the board is polarizing, I would say, including mainly the deck. Um, it's either going to be kind of a love it or hate it. I think that you can grow to love it if you're riding it too, but I was a little skeptical, but it feels really, really nice. The way your front foot, I usually angle my foot a little bit on my front foot, and it fits right in there on the little slope, kind of in between the wheel flares. Like, it's, it's just, it melded right in. The, my back foot feels nicely braced against the back part. Um, where the deck actually rises up, gives you like a lot of stability, and this board wants to go fast. It's a direct drive board, which means that the motors are directly connected to the wheel through like the prongs that go into the wheels are directly on a motor on the truck. 
as opposed to other boards like a belt drive board where you have a motor turning a belt that's turning a cog that's on a wheel. Or with a hub motor, the actual motor is inside the wheel. You have a thin layer of urethane on the outside called a sleeve, and that's how it actually powers it. So each have pros and cons. The direct drive, though, is really cool because it's silent, basically, compared to like a belt drive where it's whining like kind of like a drill or like a little jet engine all the time. Uh, this one's like silent. It reminded me of riding my one wheel where you hear everything around you even more because you just don't focus on it. It's not that a belt drive is necessarily louder than everything that's going on, but it's something that's constantly there. Whereas without that, you just start noticing things, I think, a little bit more. So I do like that part. Also, people don't, I don't know, they have, everybody's weird about motorized anything. So it's kind of cool that you're just completely silent. Like, there's no way you could be really annoying them at all. The speed of the board is super fast. I broke 30 miles an hour on the board. Uh, that's with the 105 cloud wheels though. You do have to have the larger wheels on to break that kind of speed But even like 27, which is what I did on the 97 millimeter wheels is super fast Even on a long board for most people high 20s is like you're cooking um, Yeah, some people are gonna want to go faster and faster than that But I think that most people are gonna be fine at the lower 20s going up hills was fine going down hills was fine The braking was strong. I'd say that you start to feel the voltage sag like after 80% of the battery has been depleted You get a lot of performance for a lot of the battery and the battery can last a long time It's rated at 30 miles. I fully believe you can get 30 miles out of it during my range test I got 26 and a half 26.6 .6 miles out of the board, but that was like riding it really fast the whole time. If you're just kind of cruising around and stuff, you can get more than 30, I'm sure, out of the board. The cool thing about electric skateboards is you can get momentum, let off the gas basically, and be coasting for as long as until the board starts to slow down and you want a little bit more. So you can get a lot of range out of it, especially if you need it. You can start like eking it out by doing that. So you can get a ton of range out of this board easily in the 20s for like all riders I would say um, and then lighter riders I think you can get into the 30s so just depending on everything how you're riding though is the biggest and obviously your weight and size the other thing that really sets this board apart is the style of the board it's really really sleek there's almost no seams when you look at it uh, even the way the motor cables go into the housing that's all made of carbon fiber is super clean, symmetrical, and just looks nice. The board looks really, really cool. Now on the top, there is a lot of branding. Uh, some people are going to like that, some people aren't. I think it's kind of cool. I like that it has the name of the model. It says Phantom. Not like It has the little M for Miles, but Miles is small and Phantom is big. I thought that was cool, at least. They went that direction, not like a huge thing that says Miles. Like They're not pushing the brand as much. I feel like as they're pushing like in this the model name like this is this is what it is it's the phantom and everybody all my friends that saw it on my facebook and stuff are like oh man what'd you think of the phantom the Fa and so it's working it's smart to put that name to put a cool branding name i like that they named it something cool um i think phantom is a cool cool word for a cool name for it uh, especially with this like very sleek carbon fiber board one thing though i'd say my biggest con with this board that i've had so far that i've noticed is I really don't like where the charger plug goes into the housing. Now, it's not terrible, it's like I can get to it, but it's it's easier if the board's upside down or I can get to like the bottom of the board, like coming underneath the wheel in the truck, trying to line it up as hard so it's easier to get it if you just flip the board over and then just like reach down and slip it in like this. Um, but yeah, so that's probably my biggest drawback. Other than that, I really don't have many. Now I'm sure you could re-grip this board if you didn't want the branding on top. You could put whatever grip tape you want. It's not a big change. There's almost no branding on the bottom. It just says Phantom on the metal plate, basically, that goes into the inside of the uh, board. I really like that Miles board pushed it a little bit and tried something new. Didn't just make the same like peanut shaped long board that we've been seeing for like six years now or 10 years now. Overall, this board is super fun. I definitely recommend it for someone that's looking for a really clean looking board, something very professional looking, a lot of performance, a lot of range, and a lot of speed. It's silent, like it's really cool. If you're looking for something like that, 
This is your board. I don't think there's anything else on the market that even comes close to meeting all of those types of features. Now, no board is perfect. It's not gonna fit everyone's use case, but like you're not gonna take this down a huge mountain, for instance, this is not an off-road board. Uh, but this thing is super cool for the use case that it fits. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. I'd be happy to answer them, and I will see you guys next time.